going to take all of the attractions that I have identified, geographical regions, geographical features, leisure and attractions, I made a legend for those. Now I'm not going to retype this here in this video. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to my original pamphlet and copy that text. So let me take my text tool and just click and copy this. There's my first column. Edit, copy. Go back over here. So my text is now in my clipboard waiting to be pasted somewhere. I switch here to my text tool. I'm already on my text tool. This time I'm going to make a text box. I click down with the text tool and drag and it makes a text box and the cursor is blinking there waiting for me to paste my text. So I go edit, paste. Now you'll notice that my text is a little big here. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to click my cursor inside this text box and to make sure I select all the text, even the text that's not showing, that's outside of the bounded area of the box, I'm going to go to the select menu and choose all. Shortcut is command A. There we go, it selected all of the text and I'm going to reduce the font size to say 8 and it seems to have fit everything except the one piece right there. And Let me stretch the, the bounding box a little further here. There we go. You see that last bit of text appeared. Go back to my move tool. Move this up a bit. Perfect. Come back over here. I have a second column of text. And I click down and drag and I copy. I come back over here and draw a second text box. Paste. Uh, let me click my cursor anywhere in that text box and go select all and reduce the font size to say 8. Okay, back to my move tool and there we go, we have my legend. You'll notice over here that I typed in like, especially here in, the, in this small area of Montreal, I had 12, 13, 14 all together and if you go to the legend you'll notice that under leisure uh, expectations, the restaurant which is in old Montreal, I I tagged it with a 12, but if you look at attractions, Old Montreal Point de Calier Museum, it is also near expectation. So I, I tagged it with 12 as well. So that way we're economizing a bit on space. Of course, what remains to be done is to put a title in my map. So let me come over here and do that now. If I click and drag and make a text box and I type, take my caps off, type greater Montreal and I'm going to hit uh, the carriage return, the enter key, area, map, so I'm on the second line. I'm going to block all of this in. I'm going to blow it up a bit. 24 looks good. Center it. In this case, I'll, I'll try, I'll try a, uh, let's see, a font that's a little thicker, because it is a title. And if you want, you can get fancy. I did use a little fancier font here. For example, let me try this font here, Batavia. There you go. You'll notice my properties for my text tool are all up there again. Here's a color tool. I change the color of my font with that tool. And maybe I'll do a dark green so it's consistent with the general color of the map. There we go. Okay, it's starting to take shape. Let's say I want to add a drop shadow to this text layer. Now you'll notice I have many layers going on now. So I'm going to click once on that Greater Montreal Area Map, and while it's selected, I will go to the Layer Menu, Layer Styles, and, tr and select Drop Shadow. And a Drop Shadow appears. Now, because the color was a dark green, when you choose the Drop Shadow, which is a, a black, you're not really going to see it that much. It almost makes the green look a bit blurry. So what I could do is change the color of the Drop Shadow, say to, say to like yellow a complementary color. So I'll switch this to a normal color option and I'm going to go to yellow and I'll increase the opacity of the yellow. Look at the yellow over the the title now and the spread. Watch this. See as I increase the spread of the shadow. And there you go. Now one last thing that I want to do to this map is I want to add a background color. Now I could just go onto my background and I could I could pour a color in there. Let's do that. 
if right now my background set to black if I pour a color in there look I I can't see my text anymore because the text was black as well if I switch it to a light blue you get something like that but I also wanted to show you how to create as a new layer so if I go to the layers window which by the way if ever you lose your layers window it's under the window menu look my layers are gone if I go to window layers they reappear I'm gonna make a new layer so I go under the menu for the layers up here in the right corner of the layers window I click on that menu option ask for a new layer and I'll call it background and I click OK and in here instead of my paint bucket I'm gonna switch it back to gradient and I'm gonna uh, change my colors going from light blue to let's say a darker blue the gradient will create a pattern you can see a sample up here going from light blue to dark blue so now if I stretch a line going from top to bottom then the uh, the pattern of shifting in the color will uh, going from light blue to dark blue will spread across will be distributed across that area but if I were to do a small line say from light blue to dark blue then you can see that the shift is a lot quicker and there we go that's not bad of course if I go the other way then the color shift is quite the opposite there we go now notice if I take this background layer and I grab it I hold down and I grab it and I drag it all the way to the top here and I drop it we now we now have lost everything in fact we didn't lose it let me click the visibility of the layer over here I turn it off and you'll notice you can see everything underneath and that's merely because this solid image is on top of everything else if I drag it down remember the analogy I gave you earlier of transparencies on overhead projector if I move it down and it's underneath below the map then the map shows above and so basically we will wind up with a pamphlet a complete pamphlet that looks something like this don't forget to save your pamphlet let me save my new one here we go I'm gonna go save as I'm gonna put it in my geography folder I go to my documents folder into geography and my map and I'm gonna save it as well I have one called geo already I'll call this geo 2 and I'm going to save it as a Photoshop document. By saving it as a Photoshop document, I keep all of my layers. But I'm also going to save a JPEG version. So the Photoshop version, I'll be able to come back and modify, manipulate any of the layers, change text if I made a spelling mistake, so on and so forth. But I'll also save a JPEG version. If this is my final version and I decide eventually, well, yeah, this is what I'm going to use on my pamphlet, the JPEG version will crunch all those layers into one single layer. So it's one single image. So let me close this now, and I'm going to go to open, and here's the JPEG version. Look, I'll open that up, and you'll notice over here in layers, there is only one layer now. So I could insert that into Word as one solid image, and it will form the back area of the pamphlet, which will be the map and its legend.